Milling the timber is pretty boring, but I thought surfacing this piece of grey gum was worth including. See? <laughs> and that's all of the tazioke and grey gum needed for this job. To create the lower side assemblies, I needed to rip the edges of the grey gum to an 8.8 .8 degree angle and make sure the overall vertical height was the same as the tazioke piece. Now I can quickly run some matching grooves in the pieces to help locate them during glue up using a tongue and groove method. The upper and lower rails will have bullnose edges, along with everything else on this build. The last thing that I want is my sister complaining to me that her baby is getting splinters from the baby cot that I built for her. And after a bit of planing, scraping and sanding, I could glue up the lower assemblies using plenty of blue masking tape to protect the now finished sanded faces from squeeze out. I really hate cleaning up squeeze out. To make the legs, I started with 1 inch thick boards laminated together to make 2 inch thick boards. Then while they were still square pieces, I drilled holes to accept insert nuts which would be used to bolt the sides to the front and back panels. And then I could rough cut them out on the bandsaw and shape them on the router table using a flush trim bit and an MDF template I had made earlier. Always making sure to route down the grain by flipping the template over and taking advantage of the dual bearing on my router bit. Now I can rough cut the side slats on the bandsaw and final shape them using the router table and a proper shaping jig I had made earlier. This is the part of my trade that I enjoy the most. Quickly batching out precision components is what it's all about. This is shot in real time. It takes approximately 30 seconds to produce one side slat. Now I want to start work on the upper portion of the sides. This piece of grey gum that I milled earlier is only just wide enough, so using a paper template I can figure out where to rip this in half giving me the two pieces needed. Because this saw cut needs to be dead straight, I took a second pass taking off only a tiny amount so that I would end up with a nice clean face suitable for gluing to. Then I can mark and drill out dowel locations into the underside of the upper side rails. To locate the upper rail to the header rail, I will just use three dowels hammered in from underneath. Using the upper rail, I can use this to transfer the dowel locations to the lower side assemblies I made earlier. This way I can be sure that all of the side slats will run vertical. And then I can glue the upper rail to the upper header bar using rubber bands as clamps because it is a pretty weird shape which didn't work very well for normal clamps. While I wait for the glue to dry, I can round over all of the edges on the shaped side slats and also drill out the dowel holes in the end of the slats.
Then I can drill out the upper and lower side assemblies for dowels to connect to the legs at a later date. And before I assemble the sides, I need to smooth the surfaces because it would be a major pain to sand these surfaces after assembly. These sides have a lot of components to assemble all at once, so I broke the glue up down into as many parts as possible. Firstly I installed each slat individually to the bottom assembly and allowed the glue to dry. Then I attached the top rails to the lower section. I needed to add some pine blocks to the angled grey gum so that it would clamp correctly. And of course I checked everything was square by measuring the diagonals. While that glue up was drying, I drilled the dowel holes into the legs and also installed a couple of insert nuts which will be used as mounting points for the mattress base frame. Now I can punch in a few dowels and attach the legs to the side structures. With only a small amount of work left to be done to the sides, I'll now start working on the front and back panels. First up I make the lower rails which consist of a piece of pink grey gum sandwiched between two pieces of tassie oak. And once again I'll use a tongue and groove method to align the three pieces during glue up. I'm really liking the pink and brown contrast between the tassie oak and grey gum at this point. Next up I will inlay a piece of grey gum into a dado that I put into the front of the front upper rail. Then after the glue had dried, I could cut all of the rails to length and drill out dowel locations for the slats. You'd think by this point that I love using dowels, but in fact they are just one of the better joints to use with regards to suitability and ease of installation. Now I can cut the 40 by 20 slats to length, round over their edges, and drill out the dowel holes in the ends. And then after smooth planing and sanding all of the components, I could assemble the front and back panels. Using the same method that I used with the side panels, I attached the slats to the lower rail first, and then did one big glue up to attach the top rail to all of those slats. It took some doing to get that top rail to pull up hard. There was just way too many dowels, but that's how many I needed to use. Now I can start work on the curved header panel. Firstly I rough cut the shape on the bandsaw 
and clean up the edge using an MDF template and a flush trim bit on my router table. As you can see it's another nice piece of grey gun. I milled some tassie oak into 3mm strips to use as a bent lamination to cap off the header panel. This capping used 7 layers to create a 21mm thick capping and I glued it up using Type Bond Original. I left the bent lamin in the clamps for about 3 days just to be sure that the glue had properly cured to maximum strength. Then I brought out my hand plane shaped like a Chevy to level out the uneven edge of the capping. Now with the back, front and sides done, I could work on the mattress base. It's nothing special, just a few pieces of tassie oak dowed together to form a rectangle. There is a rebate around the upper inside edge so that I can mount two pieces of 12mm plywood to act as the mattress support. With a quick dry assembly to make sure I didn't make any major mistakes along the way, I can disassemble it and finish shaping the top of the side panels along with the rear header panel. Now I can install the header panel using some long batten screws. It's not exactly fine woodworking, but it gets the job done and it will never break or come loose. The last major component to build is the lower drawer. It's quite a large drawer at approximately 1300mm wide, so I use spotted gum for the drawer components. Spotted gum is an extremely strong timber and this drawer will likely only house a blanket or two, so it will be okay. I constructed the drawer using a dowel method, because by now you must be sure that I love dowels. And in this instance, I do love dowel drawers, because they are relatively easy to make and super duper strong. To install the false front to the draw box, I first attach some double sided sticky tape to the draw box and then gently press the false front into position. From there I can pull the drawer out and add some screws in from behind. Now with all of the construction complete, I can apply a couple of coats of Osmo PolyX hard wax oil. I would have preferred to use a Danish oil finish for this piece, but Danish oil off gasses and smells for many months after application, so I didn't want my sister's baby inhaling the probably harmful chemicals. You gotta give the kids the best start in life wherever possible. And that's it then. I think it turned out bloody fantastic. It's a pretty big unit, way too big to get in and out of somebody's house. So it's been designed to be knocked down with the front, back, sides and base all being bolted together using only 12 bolts. 
The mattress can be positioned in two different heights, up high when the baby is young and can't sit up by itself, and then down lower to try to prevent the baby from being able to climb out of the cot when they get to that age. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section. I'll leave you with a slideshow of some of the photos I took along the way. And until the next video, thanks for watching and have a nice day.